We are now in our enrollment season and we have open enrollment for new families happening just around the corner. I wanted to come back to a question that a number of our parents have asked uh, here and there throughout the school year um, with uh, concerns about what the government's going to be requiring on COVID vaccinations. Uh, so uh, this is a multifaceted question and um, I'm going to uh, try to give you uh, everything you need to know um, at this point to make a decision because I know for um, some families uh, whether a vaccine is going to be required for COVID to be in a school setting is one of the factors that you're making in your decisions for schooling next year. Okay, so like I said, it's a multifaceted uh, question. Um, parts of it involve what's going on now and then potentially what's going on in the future. Uh, so current law right now allows for um, a personal beliefs exemption for any vaccine that is created after the year 2015. Uh, in 2015, it's when our lovely state of California uh, came out with uh, new regulations on vaccines that removed a personal beliefs exemption. It's not something that I've ever liked or cared for. Basically, they wanted to take um, the decision making uh, power out of parents and uh, place that um, only in the hands of doctors. So currently there's only a medical exemption for any vaccines that had existed at the time of that law. Uh, the thought was that any vaccine that came out after 2015, because it would be new and um, would have uh, much less testing going on, uh, that any vaccine that came out after 2015, a personal beliefs exemption would still be allowed. So as we stand currently, um, if a COVID vaccine is required in schools, and I say if because it's not currently required, uh, politicians have talked about uh, having it required, and I would say it likely is going to happen, but we're probably talking in July. Uh, so as far as next year goes, practically speaking, we probably should expect that a COVID vaccine is going to be added to the list of vaccines for school entry. But currently there is a personal beliefs exemption that's going to be allowed. So here's how it would work for you. Um, as things stand currently, and I'll get to uh, one other thing about what could happen in the future, but as things stand currently, it's likely that COVID vaccines will be required. And if you are in favor of that, or you're fine with that, or you don't have a personal belief that would cause you to object to that, then you would plan on getting a COVID vaccine uh, for your child before um, the start of next school year. If you have a personal belief against that, uh, and there's, a, there's really, um, there's no authority that's standing over you telling you what personal beliefs are going to be allowed and what are not gonna be allowed. Um, a lot of that, um, I suppose, depends with us, and we're going to give a lot of wide latitude to parents uh, to um, have your own personal beliefs on that and make that decision. So we would just need you to fill out a form uh, that would say that you have a personal belief uh, such that you would not want to have your child get the vaccine and will accept that. Um, so right now we do not have that form, and that's because there is no law yet. So uh, I've been in contact with the Pacific Justice Institute that has advised us on these issues throughout the pandemic. As soon as the law comes out, again, likely in July, they are going to review the law first, and then they are going to be offering a template uh, to us that we could then use, uh, perhaps um, modify it to be specific to our school, and then provide that to you as parents that you could fill out uh, if you um, have a personal beliefs um, objection to the vaccine, uh, we'll go ahead and accept that. And so then you should still be fine. Uh, you, those that have been with us for a while know that where our hearts are at are parental rights. And we really would like to see that you as parents can make those types of decisions. Uh, it's very similar to what we did with the mask mandate. Um, we felt that we couldn't fully give an answer until we first knew what the law was, heard from the Pacific Justice Institute on some advice and then made a decision. So right now, as things stand though, we, we do know that the current law allows for those personal beliefs. And it's only the form 
the specific design of the form that we're waiting on. Okay, now that's what's current. But uh, many of you, I'm sure, have seen uh, news articles uh, lately that have uh, some politicians uh, stating that their intention is to change that 2015 law and they want to remove that personal beliefs uh, exemption option. Um, at this point, um, there is no law. It's um, Some politicians are voicing that, and it's a little difficult for us at this point to respond to a law that doesn't exist, that at this point is some political rhetoric that may or may not come to fruition. Also, um, the Pacific Justice Institute cannot respond to a law that does not yet exist. There's no specific legal language. There is no, um, there's no law. And so until that happens, it's hard to give um, our view of exactly what we will do until we actually see a law. Um, when we see a law, we'll follow a similar process to what we did with the, the mask mandate. Once the mask mandate for schools came out, which had language that sounded like pretty much you had to require masks in schools, um, the Pacific Justice Institute reviewed the law. They provided us uh, their legal opinion on it, which was that the, the way the law was written allowed us to um, decide what our mask policy would be. And so we're looking at uh, this one in a similar way. Um, I hesitate to respond to a law that doesn't yet exist and before the Pacific Justice Institute has a chance to review it. Um, I will tell you this, that our hearts are strongly in favor of parental rights on these issues. And uh, we would have to look at that, you know, whatever comes out, and we would be looking at it long and hard um, in, and desiring in favor of parents retaining uh, those parental rights. And uh, an aspect of it is even deciding if the new law oversteps its bounds such that even if the law does not allow um, for options for parents, whether we would feel that um, the, the government has overstepped their bounds and we would not um, be able to support that law. And so again, there's no law yet, so I'm not saying that that's our position, but I know we're going to think long and hard on that as to whether we would take such a position. Um, so our desire for next year is that you as parents do have an option on that. And I can't give you a final answer yet because the story is still being written by the you know, state of California, the government. And so I hope that that answers your questions. I know there's still some uncertainty because we don't know yet what will happen. Um, but we know for certain what is allowed right now, and that is if uh, you can get your child vaccinated for school next year, or if you have a personal beliefs, you can get an exemption for that. And that's where things stand right at the moment. Uh, so I'm hopeful, hopeful that this is helpful to you as we move forward. Uh, we do look forward to working with your families next year and provide them a school setting where your children can be here without violating uh, your personal beliefs and, um, and move forward um, with a safe, um, safe environment and the one in which your children thrive. All right, take care and have a good day. Bye now.